Okay, let's start. Are you ready for some more flipped classroom notes? Okay, to all you cotton-headed ninny-muggins who just groaned at the thought of this again, something you need to realize is that we would be doing the same thing in class. So this just gives you the control to stop the movie as needed because you can't stop us in class. And Mr. O and I both saw your notes and believe that those are some of the best notes that we have seen. We like this because it gives you the control to stop the movie as needed because you can't, again, stop us in class. Take your time. Take breaks. We promise this PowerPoint show is so much fun. We've included some great thematic music to help you in your comprehension of these notes. All of these events led up to the biggest moment in our country's history. The time when we finally said no to Britain. The moment when our founding fathers declared our independence. The moment the United States was born. It brings tears to my eyes just thinking about it. Let's take a moment to look at the big picture here. If you look at all of the reasons that caused the American Revolution, okay? I love this quote at the top by Philip Renew. When a certain king, whose initial is G, shall force stamps upon paper and folks to drink tea, when these folks burn his tea and stamp paper like stubble, you may guess that this king is then coming to trouble. Okay. So first we are looking at the political causes. So this di directly links to the government, political government. The first thing we have is England's neglect of the colonies. Well, can you blame them? They were so far away. And in the same sense, can you blame the colonists? Being so far away led them to develop some of those independent thinking that led to our independence and wanting more. Taxation without representation. You're going to hear a lot about this throughout your textbook, which I know I already heard some people saying today, and also in your notes, in the next set of notes. Taxation without representation. Limitation of individual rights. This went along with some of the acts that we're going to talk about in the next, in the next set of notes as well. Next, we're looking at economic causes. Economic. What should you always think of? Money. That's exactly right. Anything to do with money. So this is actually the number four is actually the whole taxation process, the giving of money to the government. Again, this goes with the next set of notes. Mercantilism. This is an idea that we covered in the last set of notes, but some of y'all really seem to struggle with. So I'm going to try to go into some more detail here so that hopefully you can understand it. The whole concept is that a country becomes rich by increasing their gold supply. And the way they increase their gold supply is by selling more than they're buying, okay? If you were a company, so think of this on a smaller scale, if you owned a furniture company, okay, you would always want to be selling more furniture than what you're buying from your supplier. That's the only way for you to make money. Same thing for a country. You want to sell or export more out of your country than what you're importing or buying into your country, okay? That's how you increase your gold supply, and that's how you become rich. And the English use the colonies to accomplish this goal, okay? As part of that nav Navigation Act, by controlling that trade, they were really able to use the colonies to accomplish mercantilism, Trade restrictions. This goes right with that whole Navigation Act. Okay? The Navigation Act regulated who the colonies could trade with. So in other words, the colonies could only trade with England. They sold their raw materials like lumber, fur, and other goods to iron, that type of thing, to England. And then in exchange, England produced finished goods and sold those back to America. Once again, we could have been able to trade with anybody, and in some instances when we were being ignored, we did do this, okay? But when they did enact the Navigation Acts and made it so strict on us, we were losing money because they controlled how much we sold the raw materials for, and they controlled how much we bought those finished goods from. Again, 
allowing England to make so much money off of us. Okay, and again, trade restrictions, navigation acts, controlling trade. Economic power. When we were ignored and, and the, England did not enforce any of these kinds of laws that they placed on us, we grew to be an economic power. We expanded our free enterprise, which is reason number eight, where we traded with anybody we wanted to without a whole lot of government control. This is an important idea that we have today is free enterprise. The fact that companies can trade with whomever they want to, they can set prices however high, however low they want to, they can compete with other businesses. All of that is a part of free enterprise. And this grew in the colonies during those periods of time when we were really ignored from um, England. Okay, so now let's focus in on our first real major cause of the revolution or what led to some of the causes, and that's the French and Indian War. We have a nice little sound bite here with you, here for you to participate on. Sorry about that pop. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Feel free to dance along. Uh -huh. 